Hey, this is Daltzer, and this is Untitled. This week, we're going to talk about the USS Black, ranked play, and the Soviet destroyer line, the unreleased Soviet destroyer line. Speaking of unreleased, the video in the background is the Tier 8 Kiev. You heard that right. Kiev is going to be a Tier 9. That's what they said. They changed their minds. They're going to move the Kiev up from Tier 7 to Tier 8, the Tashkent from Tier 8 to Tier 9, and that's how it's going to work out. I know it says Yerevan, and I know it's not Yerevan. I'm just teasing the Russian speakers. It's a code name. They don't want to confuse people by showing them a Tier 8 Kiev and just blow their mind. What? It's a Tier 7. It's in my ma You know, it's in my inventory. That's the reason. The work in progress stats are not final on the screen because if they weren't, I couldn't show you this. Wargaming has told me, in no uncertain terms, if I do not make it abundantly clear that this is work in progress and the stats are not final, you will not be able to share this content. Period. So I was like, fine, I'll do that. I think it's an okay compromise. It's not really in the game space, right? And you're never going to be confused at any second of this video with me talking about, oh, it's, it's locked in, it's so broken, it's never going to be nerfed, you know? There's absolutely nothing that is subject to remain exactly the same, other than probably the model. Okay, yes, the model's not changing. So, the USS Black, what is the USS Black? It is a premium tier nine US destroyer, and it is going to be a reward ship for rank one. You need to receive rank one achievement at least five times, or reach rank one at least five times. So at least five different seasons of rank one. That's a pretty skilled player, yes. And the black is very strong, at least the version I am testing right now. The USS Black is a Fletcher class, and it's a Fletcher class with very slow torpedoes, extended range, but the concealment on the torpedoes is extremely good. Extremely good. It just takes eight years for the torpedoes to get across the map. Also, it has the ability to use radar. And it's not some crappy radar. It's 9.5 kilometer range radar. It is extremely powerful. And it is immediately noticed how powerful it is. Every single person who has tested it has basically said, wow, this seems broken. And yes, it does. I am in the USS Black with smoke and I can just sail up to an enemy, and he sees me, I see him, right? I have great concealment, 5.9, 6.0. I sail up to an enemy destroyer. He says, oh crap, we need to hide. Get in the smoke, get in the smoke, right? That doesn't do anything for you. I just pop radar and you're dead. You can't get away in the 40 seconds or 35 seconds that I have radar. You can't. And I have the ability to pop my own smoke to deny the enemies who might be behind the destroyer, the ability to engage me. So it is absolutely ridiculous with very little risk to the ship. It's just a bonus, it's just a perk. You decide between radar and speed boost. Hmm, which would I choose? Yeah, speed boost it is. <laughs> but seriously, you're gonna choose radar in this current state. I don't think that Wargaming should do it. I think a good compromise would be to force the player to decide between using smoke and radar. That is a real choice. You can either be a intel gathering machine and risk your ship if you're ever seen, you know, or you will be forced to use smoke and give up that radar, which is very good, right? I think that would be good. The torpedoes are so slow that I could see it where maybe you play it as a passive torpedo boat, right? They, they just move so slow that it's going to take you forever to do any torpedo work against the enemy. It wouldn't be ridiculous to have only radar and not smoke and not use your guns a lot. It is an interesting playstyle, but I think there is a potential with the slow torpedoes to be very slow developing. It's probably the best way to put it. Slow developing. And it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be ridiculous. 
but it is ridiculous now with smoke and radar. And some of you might be saying, well, smoke and radar, it exists in something else, right? And that's a great transition to ranked play. So I've been playing ranked only one day, one dedicated day. I'm up to uh, 13 or 12, somewhere along there. It's not really important. But what is important is who is playing ranked? We are getting a ton of cruisers, and I'm not surprised. But also on North America, we're seeing a ton of people try and counter the cruiser meta. I am pleasantly surprised by the amount of games where it's only battleships and destroyers. You can't really say that about other regions, I think, right? Yeah, people, I think a lot of people buy into hype. Oh, this is going to be broken. Well, the Belfast is really good. It's not completely, you know, immortal. But I think people buy into the hype and they, they just say, OK, I'm going to play this ship. It's going to be you'll be super successful. I think the Belfast systems are very good. Obviously, it has no torpedoes, so it's nice to not have some smoke protect a torpedo boat that does that. But it's obviously it's great at anti-destroyer work, high damage on its HE, AP, high chance of fire. It's pretty much good against everything. There's not a weakness about it other than it has absolutely no armor. It is very easy to kill once you see it. And once you see it is the key term. But my rank play has been going well. I have been trying to counter the, the smoke meta with torpedoes and it's been working pretty well. I also just straight up play different ships and feel like I can compete either way. Part of that's because I, I have knowledge of the game and I'm looking to try and exploit that. But also the other part is I get in games where maybe people shouldn't be at that rank or I get people to carry me, which is always great. It's always great to be carried, right? Yeah, it feels great. Ranked hasn't felt too bad. The rewards are pretty lackluster from 9 to 2. I don't give a crap about those modules. They're too situational. I'm not going to use them. Maybe I'll sell them. I don't know. I'll probably keep them. But I just think those modules, not not the reward I wanted. I don't know that they're sacrificing. I, I don't. I seem to be getting a lot of rewards from my signal flags as I go up, but I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really run into something crazy, though, in ranked yet. The most weird thing I saw was just four or five ships sitting in smoke and nobody can see anyone. But we know how to deal with that. Yes, wall of torpedoes. And let's get to the last bit of information. The Soviet destroyers. What are they going to be, Nautzer? What did you think of the things that you tested? Well, I was able to touch pretty much all the tiers that are going to change. And overall, it feels like a Soviet destroyer line. There are a couple that really stand out. The alternative line, tier 10, is very weird to me. It's, uh, what is it? Gro? Goro? Whatever, the, the Gro thing. The tier 10 in the alternative line, so the alternative line is not a torpedo line. It is a defensive fire line. That is the universal trait that that alternative line is going to get. So the tier 8, 9, and 10 get access to using defensive fire in place of speed boost. Okay, so they're AA support ships. Yeah, they pretty much are. And as you go up, you get to the tier 10, it's like, um, this is kind of crappy. It has the worst range I've seen in a long time on a Soviet. It's like 12.5 or 12.9. You can't get a range module to increase it. That's not even on the table. You drop one of your guns compared to the Hubarovsk. And the turrets themselves break so easily. I had preventative maintenance and the main armament protection, and I think I averaged, averaged five incapacitations per game with that kind of protection. Yeah, it is 100% a support ship, and quite frankly, a AA support ship on North American servers is completely worthless. There is not one time where I queued into an aircraft carrier. <laughs> ah! But but it, when it when it goes up against an aircraft carrier, maybe in an aircraft carrier division, it smokes the enemy aircraft. It is devastating. It just seems way too situational right now. I would much rather have the Hubarovsk. And speaking of the Hubarovsk, 
the tier 9 and 10 in the main line, so the Hobrovsk and the Tashkent, will be having heal. That sounds pretty good, Notzer. What do I have to give up for heal? You have to give up smoke, which is significant, but they're basically light cruisers and they operate at range, so it's pretty awesome. I will be posting a game tomorrow with the upgraded Hubarovsk, the only change being that it has access to that heal, and you're gonna see exactly how it operates. I love it. It was very fun for me. It's probably the best change. You're not giving up or you're not gaining more power. You're not just getting heal on top of your smoke. You have to decide, am I gonna be a smoke ship or am I going to be a heal ship? And quite frankly, I think that the Soviet destroyers are more of a heal ship than a smoke ship. They just operate so far away and they're so fast. You don't want to be seen in a situation where you're five or six kilometers away from your target. You want to operate at 10 plus and it works pretty well that way. But yeah, I was really, really depressed. Well, not depressed. I'm not depressed. I play a video game for fun, but I was, I was, I was not happy with the alternative line ship tier 10. It gives up way too much power for what you're getting. It just gives it up. Guns break too much. It is terrible range. It has, you know, average torpedoes at best. And you're only getting AA for that. Yeah, AA, which is great. If you can guarantee you're going up against an aircraft carrier, if you can't, it is awful. I would much rather have the Hobarovsk. Much rather have the Hobarovsk. But the Kiev, Kiev's fine at tier eight. They didn't really change any of the stats. It's basically the same ship, almost identical, just has more health. I don't know about that. Yeah, we'll see. It, you get access to eight kilometer range torpedoes, which is nice, but I don't really find I use them that much based on my play style of keeping it as a gunboat. Overall, for all of the ships, I love them. The Soviet destroyer line feels great. It really is a developed identity and it continues going forward. The gun systems are great. The predictable lack of torpedo range is also okay if I can have great guns. I really do enjoy it. I'm really excited for these to come out. I don't care that it has a Soviet. Oh, they don't have destroyers. I don't care. It's gameplay. It's fun. I hope you'll be excited to see the content in the near future for them. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you next time.